Hello and welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. I'm Chris Larson. Today we're joined by Trevor Sumption from Fishhawk Electronics. Trevor, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I I think when we started this thing four years ago, we said uh, we said, well, you know, we're not going to really have ourselves on, so we're we're breaking our own rule. So we've done it a few times, and honestly, I think we get more requests for it than we probably should do it more. Honestly, I think uh, people should. looking for information, and yeah. and this is a show um, that we're going to talk about the new product, the Lithium Series, and it's something that. People still have questions about. There's a about an hour and a half long YouTube video. If you go on our YouTube channel, the Fishhawk Electronics YouTube channel, and you click on live, you'll see the show there. Basically, our introduction show to the Lithium series. Uh, there'll be a lot of questions answered there, but we're going to try to answer them here in about a 25, 30 minute show instead of having someone have to sit through an hour and a half. And some of it's repetitive that that other show just because people were chiming in throughout the show, but we'll try to answer all the questions here in this show. And there'll be a little bit more abbreviated compared to what we did before. Uh, first, Trevor, maybe just kind of break down the lithium series and basically where the idea came from and how it got started. Well, we saw that there was technology out there that we could use that kind of helped address what we thought were the the weak points of of the previous product of the X4 product. So if you rewind even further, you know, you go all the way back to like the 840 probes and and, and then the X4 probes came out. You know, the X4 probes came out because we were able to do things better than what we were able to do with the 840 probes. So we kind of, you know, that 840 probe ran for 25 years. So we knew what the weaknesses were just like we know what the weaknesses were in the X4 Pro, which we had out for over a dozen years. So um, when we saw the technology kind of coming down the road, as far as, you know, uh, we've all got wireless charging in our phones, we use it every day. And that is just a perfect application that kind of addressed what we saw as the biggest weakness of the X4 probes, which was batteries. Um, you know, everybody knows that oil and water don't mix. Well, batteries and water ain't much better. So by the time we're maintaining batteries and trying to keep those dry and kind of all the issues that go along with that, this technology, the rechargeable uh, technology, though, the wireless charging technology um, just seemed like a natural fit for the product. And putting that all together, you know, obviously going to the lithium battery, the built-in battery, it takes away, like you said, a lot of the um, weaknesses of the other product. But what else came about? What other advantages do you have with the new lithium series that you didn't have in the previous product? Yeah, so I, we should probably back up just a little step there. So the, the first one that, that everybody notices, of course, is the size. You know, you, you look at that in relation to, to my hand. Um, it's about 40% smaller than the x4 probes were so it's 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 a lot smaller it tracks through the water a lot better so the actual design of the case makes it slip through the water better so it's more efficient in the water um, which also makes it, uh, it it works better at low speeds if you're going at really low trolling speeds especially you know maybe people that are fishing for walleyes or, or kokanee where you're not fishing as fast as you would for your you know your your salmon speeds go um, so those are, you know, the, the size, the actual physical shape of the probe. That's really the first thing you notice about it. And then there's just a few other kind of things that we built in there. If you look at the rear here, so um, you see the two little pins and they're a little harder to see on camera there, but you see the two little pins, um, which there's the temperature sensor. And that's also what turns it on, you know, on the X4, uh, those pins came out the front of the probe. So, you know, you're pulling the probe up and it's rough and you hit the side of the boat or you hit the swim platform, you know, those could be damaged. So by moving those to the back, um, it really, uh, it, it takes that out of it. So again, these are just little things that we learned, you know, really since like 2009 um, that we built into, that we built into the, to the lithium probes. And it's, it's really based on experience and it's based on the, the feedback that, you know, that customers gave us, you know, um, during that, during that uh, decade. Yeah, and the charging, it's a question that we get a lot um, already now where we've introduced this product about two weeks ago and people ask, um, you know, about the charging. How long does it take? How long does the charge last? So the charge lasts at, at, a, at a fully charged state. The charge will last, um, we say, at least 50 hours. Um, and what that is, is that's actual fishing hours. That's uh, that's not uh, that's not total. That's actual 
50 hours in the water. So, and in a lot of cases, field testing, we, we actually got uh, far more than that. So that's, uh, that's from a full, full battery. Uh, so it's got a really long, you know, actual run time on there. As far as your charging time goes, um, if you, if your battery was absolutely stone dead, you're going to go from zero to hundred in about two hours. Um, and in a pinch, you can actually get, um, you know, more than a day's worth of fishing just by charging, uh, just by charging for 20 minutes. So the, the battery consumption is actually uh, very low. Uh, so it's a very efficient circuit. And, uh, and we were really, really happy with how, um, how the charging performance came out uh, in the final product. The other thing when you have something like this is people want to know about the replaceability. Now, obviously, this is a completely sealed system with this lithium battery, but the life cycle on the lithium battery within the unit is a long time. Can you talk a little bit about that? It is, yeah. So um, once we put the electronics, uh, which includes the battery and the, and the charging coil in there, once we do that, um, we fill that whole cavity with epoxy, so there's no way to get it out of there. Uh, there's no replacing the battery or anything like that. Um, but the, the actual battery and the, the smart charging uh, you know, circuit that's built in there, um, so you've got literally thousands of charge cycles before you would ever notice battery degradation. And in fact, you probably wouldn't notice battery degradation just based on your on your run times. So you've got literally, uh, I, th I think we say 5,000 uh, 5, charge cycles is, is what uh, is uh, is what we're advertising there. Um, and in reality, it's probably more than that. But, uh, you know, the actual battery, you know, the the duration or the longevity, you know, total life lifespan of the battery um, is, is very, very good. And I just don't expect that to be an issue for anyone. Um, and you know, if, if I if I got to use this thing for 5,000 cycles, uh, I'd be ecstatic because that means I'm doing a lot of fishing. So I, I really don't think it's a, it's a realistic scenario that people are going to actually wear out the battery. So. All right, Trevor, like the old system, we've got three different systems. We have the Ultra, we have the Pro, and we have the Multi. You know, people kind of wondering what the differences between those three are and how they line up with the old lineup. Can you kind of give us an idea of what the differences between the three models are? Yeah, let's start with the flagship, which which is the Ultra. So the Ultra is going to give you uh, is going to give you your surface temp, your surface speed, uh, and then it's going to give you probe temp, probe speed, and probe depth. So the Ultra is the replacement for the X4D Bluetooth. The Ultra also has the the Bluetooth functionality in it. So that's the um, like I say, that's the direct replacement for the uh, for the X, X4D system. Uh, the Pro system <clears throat> is the replacement for the X4, and that's going to give you your surface temp, surface speed, and then your probe temp and probe speed. So that's the that's the uh, that's the Pro, and then the Multi. We're actually offering the Multi in, in two in two flavors, uh, but the Multi is uh, is what's replacing the X2, uh, and the X2 uh, you know is is less known uh, you know to a lot of people, but the X2. Uh, when it was introduced, that's the that's the portable one. That's the one that has the slip deucer and the uh, um, so you didn't have to either use it with a downrigger and you didn't have to mount anything permanently on the boat. Uh, so that was the X2. So the multi we're actually we're offering with that slip deucer. So again, uh, you know, totally portable, totally portable system. And we call it the multi, by the way, because a lot of um, you know, anglers that have multi-species boats, you know, maybe you're jigging for walleyes one day and trolling for salmon the next day where you don't, uh, you're taking your trolling gear off. Uh, that's what, uh, that's what the multi is, is, is good for. And that's why we named it that. Um, but the second configuration that we're offering with the multi um, is a transit mounted transducer because uh, there are, there are applications where, um, where that's a, a, a benefit to you, um, where if you're going to put on a downrigger, um, you know, just for using the probe, um, there still is no better way to use a probe than with a downrigger. So even though we say you you know you don't have to use a downrigger, um, <clears throat> all that being said, a downrigger is very very convenient for using a probe. So there was enough people doing that that we that we offer the multi with the transom mount option as well. So you're able to select on that one whether you're getting the slip deucer for a truly portable unit or with a transom mount transducer uh, for a little bit more permanent installation. Very good. How about probably the biggest question that, that we got during the show is, does this work with the old system? 
Yes. And so that's a big, that's a big design factor for us um, in a lot of the things we do. And really, really anything that we've done since 2009 uh, and uh, this, this product included, and, and that's backwards compatibility or simply this product works with the other products that are out there in the field. So you don't have to put a new transducer on, you don't have to put a new display on, um, all, everything, everything works together as a kit still. So, uh, you're, you know, while we would love to sell everyone a brand new system and, and, you know, put a new display on and there's advantages of the display as well. We can talk about that, but while we would love to do that, we, we recognize maybe that's not the best fit for everyone. Um, so what that means is you can buy the lithium probe and use it with your X4 system or your XP or whatever you have. Uh, or even an 840 for that matter there's still a few of those out there live and kicking so um <clears throat> so the the lithium probe um is backwards compatible or can you know works with everything um that's that's out in the field right now as do the display and the transducer the transducer and the power cords are the same uh unlike a lot of like uh, depth finder companies because i know it annoys me uh you know every time you get a new depth finder you got to put a new transducer on it's like man I don't, I don't like mounting transducers any more than anybody else does. So uh, we, we try to make that as simple as possible and, and you know, utilize uh, as, as many of the parts and pieces that people already own. Uh, we, you know, we, we try to do that. And, and uh, maybe that's not the best business decision, but I sure, uh, I, sure, uh, uh, I sure appreciate it. I know when I'm putting stuff on the boat. So. All right. So backwards compatibility, it works with the old system. Um, We've been talking a lot about the probe, but we also upgraded the display. Let's talk yep. a little bit about that. Based the new display on the X2 display, which we introduced a couple of years ago, uh, we really liked the performance, the fit, the finish, the look of the of the X2 display. So we we took that we take that same really the same design theory and we just blew it up. We made it bigger. So what that is, uh, what what we liked about that display was the fact that. We're using a, a, it's a glass over design. So this is actual a glass face on it versus a plastic face. And it goes over, it covers that opening and there's a great big VHB gasket on there. So it really does a good job of, of waterproofing the face. Along with that, um, it uses, uh, it uses uh, pill pad keys. So there's actually a keyboard versus the membrane switch that we used to use on the, uh, that we used to use on the, the X4 series stuff. Um, so that's a, you know, we really like the, the feel of that and it, uh, it does very well over time. Uh, th those, those uh, keyboards uh, last a long, long time. So uh, the size, as far as like your digits and everything go, that, that stayed the same. So, um, you know, there's a lot of similarities there. The actual screen itself is going to look, um, you know, pretty much the same in there. But I, I think uh, if you had to look, if, if somebody's asking the question, why do I want the new display? Well, it's going to be more durable over time. It's going to look better for a longer period of time because of that glass face. It's very scratch resistant, very, very durable. Um, and it's just uh, it's just something that uh, you can uh, put on the boat and, and you know that it's it's going to be really, really solid for for a long time. It also and this is, you know, some guys care about this or, or some people don't, um, but it also kind of matches current electronics or modern electronics. It, it matches it better. So it, it looks better with you know, what, uh, what's on your boat. Maybe you've got Garmin on there or Lowrance or Humminbird or whatever other, um, you know, uh, fish finders or multifunction displays you have on there. The, the fish hawk looks, uh, it, the, the new displays, um, look more similar to that and, and, and they kind of coordinate a little bit better. So. And does that have a low battery warning on it? So if people are out there, give them an idea when that probe is running down. Yes. So the, the ultras and the, the ultra and the pro, uh, have a, a will give you a low battery prompt uh, on screen. So if the the probe battery is is uh, is uh, draining down, um, it'll actually say a low bat on screen, telling you obviously that it's time to uh, charge the probe. The other thing you'll notice, um, you know, this is just in field testing. You know, a lot of hours. Uh, you got to go out with me a couple times uh, this summer. The other thing you'll see is like your probe will be working great. All of a sudden, you know, it starts, you know, it'll drop out for a second or so, something like that. Sometimes that's a, that's a kind of a, a hint maybe that you might want to uh, charge as well. But for the most part, the, the probe, it, it's, it's designed where it's kind of an all or nothing. So it's, it's got a very flat power curve. So it's going it's, to, it's like a, it's like any other like lithium power tool. It's like you're, you know, you're using your screwdriver and it works, it works, it works. All of a sudden it's just dead. 
uh, where it needs to be recharged. The probe is very much the same way. It kind of follows that same flat power curve. Let's talk a little bit about that testing, Trevor. I know uh, we had it out in the field for quite some time. Uh, a bunch of different people got a chance to use it. Um, tell us a little bit about that testing. I know we had a few people asking, you know, concern about how the performance is in cold weather, those yep. types of things. Um, we put this thing really through the test. <laughs> we did. I mean, so um, th that's one thing I was going to mention is, is – um, we actually started this project really early in 2019 and, and it actually took quite a bit longer than than what we had anticipated just based on all the stuff that was going on supply chain wise with uh, uh availability of microchips i really took about an extra year uh, because we actually had to redesign it a couple times based on the fact that the you know chips that we were building into the spec just simply weren't available and, and we didn't know if they would ever be available again so uh so it kind of added some time to that process but um Kind of throughout the whole duration there, yeah, we did. Uh, we, we, we've field tested this product more than we've field tested any other product um, in at least since at least since I've been here. Um, so yeah, we we've had this thing out for a long, long uh, you know in the field for a long time. Uh, so summer of make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, summer of you know first product was in the was you know the first like hand built prototypes. We had them in the f uh, field the summer of uh, 22, and then kind of what I would call production grade stuff. We had it late in the summer of 23, so late this last summer, and we had about uh, we had about 30 people out there using you know using the probes, uh, and we and we kind of picked people specifically based on how much they're on the water. So a lot of it ended up being captains uh, because they're fishing every day, but uh, also a few kind of um, you know average joes too that that get to fish a lot, uh, and that was the whole thing is uh, let's just put as many hours on these things as possible. And find out what you know. You know, is there something that we're not seeing? Find out maybe what the weaknesses are. Get the feedback from them, uh, the questions. So, um, you know, when we did uh, finally, uh, you know, make the announcement here a couple weeks ago, um, you know, I can say I'm really confident in in what we're what we're putting out there, or, you know, what we're we're boxing up and, and shipping right now. So um, that it's been a it's been a long process, and it's and it's not always fun, but um, but we did uh, we really did you know, put it through the ringer, I think the best we could. So one of the questions that we get a lot is, is latency. That's something that people want to know about. And it was important to us when we made this product that it worked with the old stuff and was reverse compatible. And with that came a few limitations. And that's one of them. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? <clears throat> yeah, late, you know, you know, I, so I would call that I would call that refresh rate, right? Is is what I would call it. And so you can say it's latency or delay or whatever, but I would call it that, that your refresh rate. So yes, you're absolutely right. So in order to make it backwards compatible, it needs to it needs to uh, basically use the same protocol that uh, that the uh, um, preceding products did, and that's what it does. So, um, you know, one thing I think that's kind of important to point out there as far as your refresh rate goes is, you know, some of that is built in on purpose and uh, a lot of it's built in on purpose. And what I mean by that is, is like, if, if you were, if you're going, uh, let's say you had this uh, going real time and um, you're up and down waves, you're never settling in on a number, right? So that's, you know, you know, some of this is actually done on, intentionally where we take the mean over a 20 second period and whatever, and that mean number, that's what we're actually putting on the display. So that gives you a number that you can actually key and target and get back to it. And that goes back to the whole thing where we don't care what the number is. It could be two, it could be 200. All I want to know is where I caught fish. So, you know, part of that refresh rate, um, you know, part of it is the amount of data that we're sending. But then the other part of it is just uh, is, you know, taking that average and then uh, and giving us a number that that we can work with, uh, you know, to to get back to what's what's actually producing bites. Yeah, the mean is really important there because if you're sitting there and you're watching real time, like you say, as you're hitting waves, yeah, you that number is going up and down. You'd be sitting on the throttle going back and forth. Big, it big would drive time. you mad if you were getting it like that. Right, yeah. So that, so that's a lot of that's by design and, and uh, um, because we've seen what it looks like when you don't do that, right? And it's and it's not very – it's not very – uh, fisherman, it's not very fishing friendly because now, like you say, you're always, you know, you're always dinking with it. And, you know, I think, I think one thing to, to point out in that too, is like, as far as that goes, this is no different than what we've really been doing since honestly, the late 1970s, right? So this, this is, this is pretty, this theory of operation and the way we do it, it's pretty tried and true and we feel pretty good about it. Um, 
uh, we feel very good about it. Uh, where it's uh, uh, you know we know that uh, we know that this is a, a formula for repeatability and it's something that that helps uh, helps people catch fish. I think we covered pretty much everything that people asked us during the show. Is there something that you came into today that you wanted to talk about that I didn't ask you about? No, I think I wanted to kind of keep it short and sweet too, just to to answer the questions. But uh, just really, uh, just really want to uh, you know thank everybody out there for all their input over the years because ultimately that uh, that input is what is what led to this product, and uh, we're just super happy that we can that we can finally deliver on that. Yeah, speaking of delivery, are all the units up and available on the website right now? Um, I think so. Uh, so uh, I, I, when you say all, I, I have to think about that a little more carefully. But uh, but yes, we're building stuff every day uh, and, and putting stuff up. So uh, um, yes, there's a, there's certainly a good representation of it. And uh, um, th that was the other thing we did when we did this product launch. We didn't want to introduce a product that you had to wait six months for. Uh, we wanted to introduce the product when it was ready to go. And, and uh, like I say, we're building them now, so they're going to be ready to go. So as people are rigging boats uh, this winter, it, it feels to me like we're going to have a short winter. I hope I didn't just jerk, uh, jinx that, but um, but I think uh, I, uh, you know the, the product will be ready when you're when you're rigging boats. So. When can people expect to see them at their at their stores? Uh, shipping daily. So I mean, we've already had uh, dealers placing orders, and and uh, um, so I think you'll 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 see them showing up on uh, store shelves here very shortly as well. Very good. He is Trevor Sumption from Fishhawk Electronics. You can find out more about the new lithium series at the website. It's fishhawkelectronics.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this week, and we'll talk to you next time.